Hello everyone, welcome back to Siberia. We are in uh, Barokstad. And um, we are in front of the Barokstad University. So let's check out what this um, is all about. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I keep on uh, slightly coughing uh, or my, my voice sounds a little bit off. Uh, I'm still recovering. And I know that this is all pre-recorded, but I'm I'm at the end of my uh, COVID recovery because I had COVID two weeks ago. Again, because I also had it two years ago. And uh, yeah, it's still it's still in my lungs. Hello. Hi. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. Just who do you think you are? Hey, Spunky, I'd like that in a lady. Okay, I'm hooked. Come on, Zal. I'll let you buy me that coffee. What? I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. That, that's weird. Rude. But also weird. That's not how you... Uh, I was about to say pick up ladies, but that's not how you do things, period. A little bit too overconfident there, my friendo. All right, let's enter Barkstadt University. Looks amazing. What is that? A mammoth? No idea where to go to. Let's go up the stairs. Or should we? Yeah, well. You know what? I, I don't want to go up the stairs yet. It seems like that's not something that we have to uh, do yet. I want to discover the first floor first. We can go to the left. We can go to the right. And then we can go up the stairs. Can you go there? What is all this? Well, there's a door. Oh, hi. Did you want to see me? Good day to you, gentlemen. Tell me, young lady, to what do we owe this pleasure? Please do be brief. We do not have very much time on our hands. As rectors of this university, we have serious matters to attend to and our time is precious. I have heard you wish to meet the owner of the train that is currently in your station. May I know the reason for your summons? We are surprised that your train has not yet left, miss. The situation is most regrettable. The rules do clearly state that trains are meant to come and go and not remain stationary at a platform. Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. We agree then, dear colleagues, that what we're dealing with is deviant behavior. This matter really is cause for concern. It's a clockwork train, you see? So it needs winding up again? Unfortunately, there is no equipment in the station to do this. A clockwork train? That's strange. How very quaint. You mean it's some sort of mechanical toy? You are causing a hindrance to us, miss. I am very hopeful that I will find what I need along the wall. The wall? Uh, miss, that really is not a suitable place for you to go. Especially for a young lady. You see, miss, we freely admit that every day we praise the existence of that particular edifice. We owe the integrity of our dear university and the fine education it provides to the wall. It protects us from harm and invasion from the unknown. May God protect us from what is beyond those ramparts, miss. Please believe me. I don't have any choice. I must continue my journey. Uh, such a decision is a correct one, since it's in line with regulations. Thus, your train will indeed be able to leave. And consequently, cease to obstruct our station. I am 
you guys are pretty rude, too. <laughs> I haven't introduced myself. My name is Kate Walker. Walker, Walker, haven't we already had a Miss Walker? Ethnology Masters, September 1953, if my memory serves me correctly. Perfectly well, my dear colleague. But if I may be so bold, it was a Mr. Walker and not a Miss. It was Bill Walker, sat this June 68 exams. The impudent fool turned up for the oral assessment in jeans, flouting strict internal regulations which explicitly state the required uniform for the occasion. Pure incitement. It was scandalous. Sadly, we have seen worse since. Young people lack all respect of traditional values. Tradition, young lady. One must always uphold tradition. You see, I didn't actually intend to stop here, but the springs of my train gave up, you see? No, not really. You mean to say you're not a student? You have arrived a little late in the term, Miss. Enrollment for this year has already terminated. But as rectors of this university, and therefore representatives of its highest authority, we could bend the rules a little, if you like. You don't understand. I'm a lawyer from New York, or rather, Valadilen, more precisely. My client wants to buy out an old mechanical toy factory, but its heir isn't actually dead and is living somewhere in Siberia. I've got to get to him to sign the sales contract. You see? Not really. This is a most peculiar tale. A kerfuffle of the highest order. We have an excellent law school, if you should ever change your mind. You guys are only busy with your university. I'm not a student. I just need some help. Can you possibly help me out here? Miss, your insistence is almost verging on <clears throat> indecency. We cannot constantly be at your disposal. We have many other requests to attend to. If you don't mind, could you not disturb us all the time? Thank you. D uh, you summoned me. Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean anything to you by chance? Ah, one of the brightest, most idealistic intellects to have graced our university. Hans Vorlberg. I remember speaking to him once. I was still a student at the time. He just stared at me, lost in thought for a while. He scarcely ever said a word. But how can one forget him? Idealistic? I'll grant you that. But bright? Oh, don't go too far. He was completely incapable of passing any exams. All he ever did was to sit in on lessons, and not many of them either. Paleontology, mainly. He had an unhealthy passion for mammoths which matched the state of his intellect perfectly. That is to say, prehistoric. Prehistoric? How dare you? A little far-fetched, maybe. But he did have flashes of intellectual brilliance, comprehensible only to high-minded scholars who hold no score by appearances. My dear colleague, your hasty conclusions are somewhat cavalier. My assessment is wholly accurate. The boy was a little odd. You must concur if my father, who was rector of the university at the time, had not shown great indulgence towards him. Hans Vorlberg would have never attended this establishment. What about the bandstand, then? Is that the work of a deranged mind? Even after all these years, you are still jealous of it. My dear colleagues, I beseech you, let's show some decorum. We have a visitor. Uh, what do you want with Hans Vorlberg, miss? Uh, are you a member of his family? No, no. Not at all. I'm looking for him to clear up an inheritance matter. Is he still here? What? Here? At the university? <laughs> no, not at all. He left a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. The very year I was nominated to this position, in fact. Almost 50 years ago already. The poor soul moved on once he learned all he needed to know about mammoths. Ah, this establishment was never quite the same after his departure, it must be said. You mean to say it was never as bad? All that Oddball brought to this university was his misplaced fantasies! Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's try to retain the calm and level-headedness that befits our position. <clears throat> Wait, how old is Hans? He left 50 years ago. 
this is a university. You enter university somewhere in your 20s. So he must be, <clears throat> I don't know, close to 80. Excuse me. Miss, we find ourselves terribly put out by the presence of your train in our station and by its recurrent immobility. Indeed, the situation is very regrettable. Your huge locomotive is very cumbersome. A train should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. Yeah, I know. You already told me. That idea of the station aviary is really very original. It's the pride of our university. One of the specialties taught here is zoology, you see, and more particularly, ornithology. Proper study and instruction should not be limited to books. Observation of living matter is indissociable from theoretical questions. It contains some very rare specimens that have been brought back from far away exotic countries, especially for our university, by the world's most intrepid explorers. Do you remember Alexander Valembois and his peculiar bird? Absolutely. His gift produced some very embarrassing long-term consequences. A poison chalice indeed. It must be said, the situation could have been much worse, however. Oh, yes, it could have been terribly problematic. Some sailors have agreed to tow the train, but I don't have enough money to pay them. I was wondering if you could help me out for a while. I could work for the money. Please wait, miss. We have certain confibulations to attend to. That is right. We must confibulate between ourselves. A collegiate decision must be taken. I hope that we are not indisposing you in any way. <clears throat> Why not? If it helps us get rid of that train. My word, that is a fine idea. What do you have in mind, gentlemen? Hmm. When you arrived here, you must have noticed a splendid bandstand which honors the main university courtyard. A unique piece of mechanical craftsmanship which no longer works, alas. Why, yes, we have very moving memories of its melodies. We're prepared to offer you a financial reward if you can set it working again. With pleasure. What do I have to do? Unfortunately, my dear, time and rust have taken their toll on this university. And our automatons no longer have a spring in their step. <laughs> you are going to have to be resourceful. To tell you the truth, there are a number of complex mechanisms here in Barakstadt, and it would appear that we have unfortunately lost their operating instructions. Your train, however, is an extremely ingenious invention, so you should be no stranger to complex mechanisms, should you? Uh, we are therefore counting on your ingenuity, miss. I hope that I can show myself worthy of your faith in me, gentlemen. Well, my dear colleagues, one more university matter nicely tied up. Okay, so we have to fix that Here bandstand. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Yeah, go have Already? some tea. My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. I was going to say, now thank you for um, <clears throat> giving me another mission. All right, let's go and see what the other side of the university has to offer for us. There was also a door. That one. Let's check this first. And then we're heading to the right side after. Oh my goodness, what is this? Natura non facet saltus? It's the library. Looks like a library. Anything we can do here? Is there someone sitting there? There is. Or is there someone sitting there? <coughs> that light is broken. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. What can we do here? Does it seem like there's a lot of... Oh no.
ladder? Up the ladder. Or what is this? Oh, that is up the ladder. Okay. What do we have? There's something there. <clears throat> the illustrated dictionary of plants and mushrooms. All right, let's see what's in there then. I can't read it. I cannot read it. This is just a horrible font. Something with a cola. Mushroom without stem. Chewy texture. It's a member of the polypar family. Grows exclusively on the twigs of certain trees of the Amazonian jungle, while it is edible by young. Woody texture. Mm -mm. Okay, so there should be mushrooms growing on trees. Um. Special substance, it's affecting vision. Uh, discovered it, it's dried ground to a powder, consumed, blah, blah, blah. All right, something about a mushroom. Is there anything else? No, it doesn't seem like uh, there is. Oh, that's all we can do there. What about the other side of the uh, library? So, hallucinating mushrooms. Okay, we got that. Anything here? Doesn't seem like... <clears throat> There's something here. One book? Yeah, seems like there's only one book. Doesn't seem like that there's anything else that we can... Uh, look at so um, we learned about the mushrooms well let's go and check out this right side here oh hello who are you you go several ways again excuse me Sir, please, just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. Sorry? I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but... This young mammoth, this primigenius, is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? To tell you the truth, I don't know very much about mammoths, and I'm not here as a student. In fact, I'm a lawyer. It's all right. Nobody is perfect. All the same, the study of the Pleistocene period is fascinating. I'm sure it is, but I'm sorry to say my current mission is totally monopolizing my time. Um, another time, maybe. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. But anyway, let me present myself. I'm Cornelius Ponce. Emeritus Professor and Lecturer at the University of Barockstadt. I'm proud to say that I'm head of the Department of Paleozoology at our university. Kate Walker, pleased to meet you. It wasn't really my intention to stop off here, but I'll confess, this university is really very impressive. Ah, indeed. There's such a tradition of learning here. And so much knowledge, a real depth of culture, intelligence, and gray matter. I myself did my studies here and never left. 
Actually, I'm here because I've been summoned by the rectors of the university. Oh, I see. You must have made a mistake on your enrollment form. Uh, oh, no, no. I haven't come here to study. I have an important matter of inheritance to attend to. I have to find the heir. And you hope you will find him here? I'm not altogether sure. But you see, my train broke down coming into Barakstadt Station. In that case, my dear, you must come to one of my lectures. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you know what the Probosidian Order is? The probo -whatian? Ah, you see? There are gaps in your knowledge that need refreshing. I feel I've lost my way a little here. I could really do with your help. Oh, my dear child, you've chosen your moment. I absolutely must finish off my lecture for this afternoon. It's a lecture about mammoths? Oh, yes and no. More specifically, it is about their migration. Do excuse me, I need to concentrate. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Vorlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know, and we bonded over this passion. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Vorlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? He was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? Yes. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself he didn't seem to have all his mental facilities intact. No, that's impossible. Hans couldn't invent the story like that. The doll is a sacred part of the Siberia legend. He described it to me in exact detail. Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. Hmm. Interesting. Arriving in Barakstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Uh, you came by train? Yes, in a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down. Regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, no. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train? 
driven by an automaton. I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same time, he was also almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? We just talked about him. Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. We just talked about that man. My train stopped in a peculiar aviary. It's very odd. A lot of bird species seem to seek harbor there. Ornithology is far from being my favorite subject, but I must concede that the station is the pride of the university. It was initially intended for teaching purposes, but then birds started arriving from all around the world. <laughs> it seems that there are still rare species breeding there and flourishing. Are there? Can you give me an example? Hmm. I have been told about a kind of bird with peculiar habits. Let's see now, the, uh, um, the Amazon cuckoo, that's right. But, uh, oh, I'm so foolish, I can't remember what was so special about it. Just that its behavior is very peculiar. The Amazon? Where's the Amazon? What is the Amazon? I'm sorry, my dear, but one cannot learn everything in a lifetime. Specialization is the key to real knowledge. Why don't you pay a visit to our library? Thank you very much. Yeah, well, uh, that's exactly what I want to do. Uh, Professor, uh, how do I say this? You see, I didn't think I'd need a lot of money when I set out. And it turns out I need money after all. It's a delicate matter, I know, but I was wondering if you could help me out. My dear, it would be a pleasure, but you see, I barely have enough myself to cover my meager expenditure on what I'm paid by the university. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend or... However, if we look at the example of Hans, it is true that our university always rewards people who perform some service for it. This is our dear rector's jurisdiction, however. I know, I know, we already arranged that. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Oh, we did learn a lot about Hans and, and uh, his time here. So there's another door here. Where does that lead to? Let's take a little grab. There's also a door there that I want <coughs> No point. Oh, it's, it's locked. locked. Did I still want to uh, visit? We can do that right now, I guess. Let's see if this one is open. No point. It's locked. It's also locked. Right. So what do we need? To, oh wait, we can go uh, up. Let's quickly go up the staircase and see what's there. And then um, we have discovered every room of the university. <clears throat> and then we'll need to figure out what to do. What is this? It's like an auditorium. I don't, I don't know. What is this? Someone's sitting there. Doesn't seem like there's a lot to do here, though. No point. It's locked. 